I see the stars in the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe is Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. gospel for this Sunday is found in the gospel of John, the fifth chapter. I invite you to remain seated. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew, Bethzatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he'd been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well, made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take up your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath, the Gospel of the Lord. So, well, let's pray. O God of peace, we pray that you will teach us to let our stress go and be resting in you because you are our peace. In Jesus' name, amen. So this Sunday, I'm preaching out of our sermon theme, Chill Out, which is, you know, relieving stress this month. And so today I'm going to tell you 
It's all good. And we're going to talk about ways that we can make that more true in our lives, healthy ways, appropriate ways. Next Sunday, I'm going to preach about what happens when what's happening in your life is really so bad that you have to deal with really badness. But today, I'm going to talk to you about reframing. It's a psychological term that I learned when I had to learn it, and, uh, and it's really helpful. So we're going to start with this glass of water. How many of you see that glass is half empty? How many of you see that glass as half full? How many of you look at that glass and say, it doesn't matter if it's half full or half empty, it's refillable? <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? I saw that on Facebook and I was just so surprised because I've always thought of myself as a glass half full kind of person and now I can see myself as a, it doesn't really matter, I can fill the glass person. Isn't that a great way to look at things? I love that we can take something that we've all all talked about. I mean, you've, we've always heard, is the glass half full or half empty? But we get to ask ourselves a different question. Why does that matter? We can fill the glass. Who cares if it's half full or half empty? So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to talk about looking at things in a different way. We have a frame for our lives. Every time something happens, we have a way of looking at it. And reframing says, what if we just build a slightly different frame to look at things? I'm going to give you an example. There's a quote up here from uh, Mark Twain. My life has been filled with terrible misfortunes, most of which have never happened. Is that true in your life? I find myself worrying myself silly about things that haven't happened, that may happen or may not happen. But you know, my worry doesn't change whether it's going to happen or not. When we do that, it's called anticipatory anxiety. It means we have anxiety about something we're afraid is going to happen. And you know what? Anticipatory anxiety doesn't do any of us any good. No good at all. In fact, it turns us into the guy who's lying by the pool at Bethzatha. Jesus came and said to him, do you want to be made well? And he doesn't answer that question. He answers the question by saying, I have been here 38 years, and I don't have anyone to throw me in the pool when the water stirs. Apparently, in this pool, whoever got into the water first was healed. And this guy had been there 38 years waiting to get into the water first, and he'd never done it. And and can't you just imagine that every year he said to himself, when the water stirs, when the water stirs, I'm going to not be able to get in there and lay there and worry. That's anticipatory anxiety. Now, the fact is, that was not what Jesus asked him. Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? Because I think that's a fair question. After he's been lying there for 38 years, you would think that he would find a way right, to get into the water, but he didn't. And so it's a fair question. Do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? And he didn't say yes. But I have to think that somewhere Jesus understood that there was a yes, because Jesus said, then stand up and get up, take up your mat and go walk, go home. And, and he did, he did. And actually following in that text, Jesus um, was very, he, the guy was very, very grateful. And so it was clear that he had been, in fact, waiting to be well. But we have to listen to the questions. And we have to listen to our own minds. So that is the first rule about reframing. Listen to your own thoughts. What are you saying? Now, Suzanne, what she was saying to herself about first grade was, I'm scared, nobody's going to like me, the teacher's not going to like me, I'm not going to know anybody. And do you remember times when you had fears like that? I, I do, where I've just was, I, I was terrified. But if you stop and listen to what you're saying to yourself, sometimes you can understand that it actually sounds ridiculous, right? Have you done that ever? Where you go, 
well, where did I get that from? So, when you stop and listen, then you have some choices about how you act and react to things. So the second rule of reframing is that you think about mild, milder wording. So Amy could say to herself, well, I'm worried that it will be hard to make friends, instead of saying, everybody will hate me. So when you're going for a medical test and you're very anxious about it, and you start saying, as I have sometimes, well, this is going to be the one that takes me, you know. I better start planning my funeral, this is it. Right? I can say instead, you know, I think I should just wait and see what's going to happen. Maybe it's not so bad, you know. Oh, I need iron pills. Oh, I need vitamin D. Well, I guess I'm not going to die from this one, right? We can, stop our, we can stop our own thinking in its tracks and say, I don't have to think disastrously. I don't have to think in terms of everything's falling apart. I'm going to die. This relationship will never be good again. My spouse is going to be sick and I'm going to be having to take care of him. I would, though, honey, take care of you. Um, <laughs> So we can stop that thinking, right? And we can tell ourselves something else. So that's the second rule. Soften what you're saying in your head. You don't have to turn it all the way off. Just make it milder. The third rule for reframing is asking, what can I learn from this? Now, I know from experience that when you're in the middle of something traumatic and difficult, that is a very hard question to ask because you don't want to learn, right? I remember being in the hospital, you, many of you know I've been in the psych ward, and I remember sitting there like this, just depressed, unable to move. And my mother, who is, you know, a very perky person, would say to me, Glendy, just think how this is going to help you when you get out of here and when you feel better. You're going to be able to talk to people who are depressed. It's going to be so wonderful. Your life and your ministry will change because you're going to be able to help people understand that they don't have to be down and they don't have to... And I'm thinking, just go away. And I wrote that in my journal that night. I wish no one would talk to me. Right? But... She did. It, uh, the door cracked open, and I started to wonder, what can I learn from this? Which, when you're in the middle of trauma, is actually a good question if you ask it of yourself gently. Because when you're in the middle of a problem, almost every moment presents an opportunity to learn, doesn't it? I can learn patience. I can learn to be a little kinder than necessary. I can learn to be generous with myself and with other people. I can learn to take care of myself. I can learn to love the people around me. And maybe the hardest of all, I can learn to accept help and care. So, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? The fourth rule about reframing, by the way, these are my rules, <laughs> so challenge your assumptions. Um, this is a great one in relationships. I, I, uh, if, if, uh, this is an example that's never happened, right? But let's say that I walked into Pastor Maria's office and said, oh, I have to talk to you about something, and she says, I, I don't have time right now, right? And I, being me, will walk out and say, oh, she doesn't like me anymore. I must have done something to make her mad. I wonder if our relationship will ever be the same. I bet I'm going to have to look for another job. Right? I mean, you catastrophize, right, everything. And, but if I stop and say, oh, she's working on her sermon, and she likes to do that, not interrupted. Of course she didn't want me to come in and talk. Then I'm okay. Right? I, we all have to challenge the things that our own heads tell us. I have a little saying in one of my notebooks that says, stay out of your head today, it's not a good place to be. <laughs> right? Sometimes 
our own minds, our own anxieties, our own frustrations make us say and think crazy things. And we get to challenge those assumptions. Jesus challenged the man's assumption about whether he wanted to be made well. In James, the text that we uh, read first, James said to us, when troubles come your way, count it all joy. Now, to me, that's a drastic reframing of your troubles. But I think that that's a good lesson because when we stop and look at our troubles and our tribulations and the things that are the most painful and the most difficult in our lives, here's where the joy comes. We are not alone. Christ is there. We are there for each other. Friends and family are around and we can have joy in the middle of hard times. And finally, the fifth rule about reframing is to ask God to give you a different perspective. Here's what I mean. The Apostle Paul said in Corinthians that when we are weak, that's when we're strong because that's when we have to rely on God to be strong for us. So our weakness becomes strength because we know that we can't do it alone. We have to rely on God. So weakness is strength. And, um, we'll see. and um, problems become opportunities. Everything that happens to us is an opportunity for growth in our faith. I've said to you several times that the Spirit comes to us and works to make us our whole lives into the image of God. That's what will happen in our baptisms today. They will begin a life of formation into the image of Christ to be like Jesus. And that happens to us as we work our way with God through difficulties and pains and joys and everything in our lives. So everything, everything is an opportunity for God to work and change. So that's the five rules. Let me read them to you again in case you'd want to write them down. <coughs> in case you'd want to write them down. <coughs> Rule number one. Pay attention to your thoughts. Rule number two, soften the wording in your head. Rule number three, am I, am I going too fast for the one of you who's writing it down? Okay. <laughs> Ask, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? Number four, challenge your assumptions. And number five, ask God to give you a different perspective, strength, Weakness becomes strength, and problems become opportunities. So here's what I'd like you to do this week. I'd like you to take one problem in your life and reframe it. Look at it in a different way and see what a difference that can make, okay? One problem reframed this week. Um, and I'm preaching next week, so I will be here to ask you how you did. All right? <laughs> Amen. Thou my wisdom and thou my 
true word I ever with thee and thou with me Lord thou my soul shelter thou my high tower raise thou me heavenward O power of my Night. Oh, Lord, be my vision. Oh, Lord, be my light. Shine down your light of heaven, breaking through my darkest night. 